Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with the Adventures of the Memory Makers. I'm Sam. And I'm Cindy. And today we are excited for this video because we're going to show how our channel got its name. And are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So in, gosh what, 2013, we got this crazy idea that we won the boat. And my only stipulation was that we had to be able to sleep on it. Well, we discovered how small of a boat you can get and still be able to sleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to introduce you to our tiny camper, which is the Memory Maker. She's a 1983 120 sailboat that we bought for a pretty reasonable price. Yeah. And then spent just an insane amount of money on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do a quick walk around here, then we'll get ready to go. And uh, then we'll bring you on board once we get her set up ready to sail. But um, all the covers I'd sewed up like 2014, I believe. So the mainsail cover, the cockpit cover, the boat motor cover, um, and they've been hanging on really well. <clears throat> She's only 20 feet long, and they're pretty liberal when they measure her. They go all the way from the, the very tip of the bow pulpit all the way to the very back of the stern pulpit. So they're really stretching that 20 foot length. She's only seven and a half feet wide, but surprisingly, we sleep pretty comfortable in her. We do. Um, I have to say I'm probably always campaigning for a bigger boat, but... <laughs> well, that's just human nature. <laughs> <laughs> but my um, boat guy says this is enough boat that we don't need any more boats. Well, so. she fits in the toy box and that's about the limit. So, <clears throat> But one of the neat things about this boat is the top of the, the cabin area pops up kind of like a pop-up camper and then I sewed a cover for it to seal that in. So we'll show that to you later today, but we're gonna go ahead and get her unbuttoned here and get her ready to sail, and we'll show you guys what she looks like when she's ready to roll. So here we've got the boat all uncovered and ready to launch. The, um, when you, you're dealing with such a small space, what do you think is one of the most important things, Cindy? Um, keeping everything neat. Exactly, and on a boat this size, everything has its place. And if something's not in its place, then it definitely shows. So that's my job on board is to make sure everything gets back in its place. <laughs> so, oh boy. We got a beautiful day today. So we're excited to get out, get the sails up. And uh, let me take you down below on just a quick tour. Obviously this is the, the area of the boat that they call the cockpit. I'm still not sure why, because it's not an airplane, <laughs> but uh, there's quite a bit of room out here. You know, we like to stretch out here during the day while we're sailing. Uh, here on the back pulpit, uh, we've got a a 50 watt uh, solar panel which charges our onboard battery. Uh, the boat is totally self-contained as far as power goes so that panel does more more than enough for what we need for what little power we use. Uh, even the sailboat still has a motor. We've got a small four horse outboard back here that uh, gets us in and out of the slip. It's always been my goal to go all season long on one gallon of gas and last year we got really close. It was like one and a quarter gallons of gas for the whole season. We've got a a lot of people call them rail burners, uh, but we've got a grill here on the back rail that we cook our dinner and, and sometimes our breakfast on. Um, it's even complete with cobwebs. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't that, show up. That's one of the crazy things is spiders is probably our biggest issue. Yeah. Until the gulls show up on the lake later in the season and then we've got other means to deal with them. This thing's swinging back and forth here. If you're not familiar with a sailboat, this is called the boom and that's what the lower part of the main sail attaches to. I think they call it a boom because that's the sound it makes when it cracks you in the head. That's the, probably the most dangerous thing on the boat is this right here. And there are certain times that you've just got to be really cautious with that boom because it swings so fast and it will just plumb knock you silly. I've got a few pictures to show what happens when you don't duck fast enough. Uh, we've got a, uh, here in the, in, the cockpit, or in the cabin area, we've got a uh, onboard GPS chart plotter that shows our map and our trail, uh, what we'll sail. Nice thing about it is it shows our depth as well. So when you've got a four foot keel hanging down below your boat, you always want to be wary of what the depth is of the water that you're sailing in. So that's a nice feature there. And it swings out on this mount so we can see it while we're sailing. And then coming down below in the spacious cabin area, <laughs> we've got the salon area here on the right with our um, table that folds down, drops down for our bed at night. We've got two benches on the side. And the, the thing about this boat is even though it's really small, they've made a really good use of every little space that they could. So. I have added this, it originally had a, a water tank down below and a sink where the cooler's at now, but the drain went overboard and we can't have that on our lake. So I just took that out, 
turned this into storage, found a cooler that fit down inside that, made this uh, co or, uh, counter space area here. We've got the uh, silver drawer, or combination junk drawer that, <laughs> that stores everything that we need, uh, slides out. Underneath is storage for a single burner stove that we can pull out and pop on top. And then back here in the back, get turned around here. We've got our two sets of binoculars, two VHF radios that we don't use on our home lake. Uh, that was for a trip that we took on our honeymoon to the North Channel. We got our stereo down below. That's a big cavernous area back there that uh, only I know what is back in that area. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff back in there. There's fishing poles, the, the tent top for the top of the, the cabin when it pops up, all kinds of stuff. And then over on this side, there's another big cavernous area, and that's where we store Cindy's paddle board and our swim ladder, uh, and the paddle for that. These clips here on the wall are for our fire tablet. So at night, we can watch movies on the fire tablet, which is, I, I really enjoy doing that. And guess what we forgot to bring today? Yeah, you say you enjoy it, but you know how long before you're asleep. Oh, it, it's a great <laughs> way to put me to sleep. I mean, I, I sleep like a baby on this thing. <laughs> so spinning around here up in the V-berth, which is Cindy's favorite area to take naps in. <clears throat> the, it's you know, probably it's, messy. Yeah, it is from our last nap. All these come out and there's storage underneath. And then this area right here comes out and we'll show you later. That's actually where our enclosed head's at. Anybody that doesn't know a head is what they call the bathroom on a, on a boat. Cindy's, one of her big things that she always wanted was an enclosed head. So what did I do? I, can I just preface it? I wanted an enclosed head on a bigger boat. Yeah, so, but what did I do? <laughs> well, you made us a, a potty in there and made a little wall for privacy. So you have a? I have an enclosed head. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've only pumped it out once because it was a little dicey getting to the pump out station. <laughs> Everything's dicey on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. All right, so that's just a quick tour. We're going to get uh, Cindy's paddleboard aired up and get out on the water, and we'll get back with you here in a little bit. All right, we finally got the boat out of the slip, and we're out on the lake now sailing. Very nice breeze today for, for this time of year in Indiana, which is kind of rare that we have a, have a breeze. <laughs> but we've got the boat all set up. We've got Cindy's paddleboard following there behind us on the hook. And then we've got the, the sails out, we've got the main and the full head sail out. Uh, the wind's pretty light today, so we no need to, to reef the sails or make them any smaller. But um, Cindy, do you want to tell history about the boat, how we got it, why we got it? Well, it was a you know, it was a situation where, um, I, I remember it distinctly, you came, it was a Sunday morning, and you walked into the bedroom, and you said, you want to get a sailboat? And I'm like, well, yeah, of course. I've been sailing once in California with my niece, and I loved it from the get-go. And we knew we didn't want to get a speedboat because... Uh, <laughs> we were too tight to buy the gas <laughs> and not only that but on a speedboat you can't really talk to each other you can't hear the music i mean it's great to anchor on a speedboat of course and it's great to ski behind or tube that kind of thing so they definitely have their place but i of all the things that we do sailing is by far my favorite and it's because of situations like this where you know we're moving now if obviously not very quickly because the wind it's kind of coming and going but we can carry on a conversation take a nap listen to music have a refreshing beverage and it's all peace and quiet and the great thing is I visibly can see Sam relax when we get out on the water not to say we haven't had some tense moments <laughs> we have had a few it's but really a few. not not a lot no, but those are the ones you remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for That's sure. That's why they call it the memory maker. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we looked around. I don't. How did you find this boat? I don't remember. You want to bring nose a little bit to starboard, get in the wind. Uh, um, I'm He's, sure it was. He's always constantly giving me pointers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you want to sail? We got to keep the boat. You know, the sails filled full of wind. Um, you know, for Sydney to remember the day of the week that I mentioned sailboat to her. I think that says a lot as to how much she enjoys doing this because I don't even think she could tell you what yesterday was. 
Um, yesterday was Saturday. Oh, uh, well, I was wrong. <laughs> Couldn't tell you the day of the month. Oh, there you go. I know it's June, but I don't know what day it is. We had actually discussed boats before. We both had always won the boat, but just never been in a situation where we could have one. And like I said, my, my only stipulation was we had to be able to sleep on it. So I had actually been in the shower and it just kind of come to me in the shower for some strange reason. I was like, hey, don't sailboats have, have cabins? Which most of them do. And uh, you know that led to us taking a, a very eventful, our only sailing lesson was with a good friend of yours from high school. Uh, took us out one afternoon in a gale and <laughs> proved to us how badly you can screw up and still not sink someone's boat. And what we walked away from that one lesson was, Hey, we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> that and respect the wind. Yeah, and fearful of how much it costs to raise a sailboat from the yes, bottom of the lake. I was just sure that we were going to sink his boat, it, but it, we didn't. It was wasn't far from it. No, <laughs> we were taking water over the rail, but we. Um, I, I'm sure I found this on Craigslist or Marketplace. It was probably Craigslist back in 2013 when when we found it, and. We, we went and looked at several other boats. We did. We went up to Chicago. Yeah, and we actually bought it, but the trailer shook so bad that uh, we decided not to not to complete the sale, uh, which was a good thing because we like this boat a whole lot better. Yeah. This boat has way more features that that boat didn't have. Yeah. This boat, for being a small boat, it has a lot of big boat features, like that pop top and the, the opening cabin windows and the, the full lifeline, the rail around it. I mean, it, she's a small boat. Uh, and if you've seen any of our previous videos, you know that we have small campers. Uh, Cindy's uh, shaft is nine feet by seven feet, so 63 square feet. Uh, the teardrop is five by 10, so that's 50 square feet of not even all usable floor space. And then I don't know how we would ever get an accurate measurement of the volume of this boat, but we use every cubic inch of it. We definitely do, yeah. Every year when we take it home and unload it, it's like, where did all that come from? <laughs> I mean, that paddle board was inside this boat until I took it out and aired it up. And it, you'd be amazed if we drug everything out of the, the inside of this boat and showed you what all is in there. We had a beautiful afternoon of sailing today. It was a good time? Yes, it was great. I mean, the weather really was perfect. The, the wind was much better than what I did thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it was pretty steady from about, what would you say, one o'clock on? Yeah. We had a steady. We were out for almost five hours, yeah. nonstop sailing. So it was, it was a really nice afternoon, even with it being a Sunday afternoon and quite a bit of traffic on the lake. But uh, we're at anchor now, and uh, we're in one of our favorite coves. This is what we call Boy Scout Cove. There's a Boy Scout camp through the woods there, you know, about you know, a thousand yards or so. Um, it's a nice rock bottom cove, so it doesn't uh, doesn't get the anchor real muddy or anything. So it's just a nice place to hang out. It'd be a great place. The the boat is lined up pretty much to the east, so when the moon rises up tonight, we'll have a great view of the moon coming up. Um, but just wanted to touch base with you here and show you what the pop top looks like now that we've got it up. <clears throat> and you can see that it comes up, basically it just rotates up on these four struts and then ties off up onto the, the mast itself. But that really opens up this main area of the cabin. And we typically eat dinner with the top up and then once dinner's done, we'll uh, get the uh, cover out, the tent cover that I made, and we'll put the top on and get everything shut in. We've got the V berth opened up now so that Cindy can use the, the porta potty tonight. Uh, so she's got her enclosed head that she always wanted. <laughs> it's it's the little things that make the ladies happy it is you know the water's 78 degrees so yeah i know i was just in it yeah. that's pretty chilly it was yeah we got the grill fired up here the uh what we're doing here about 400 degrees the uh i haven't quite got used to this grill yet we had one gosh what was it like a menard special yeah it was super cheap yeah but it cooked great and we used it for years and i never worried about anybody stealing it off the rail because who would want a 20 dollar menard special grill but uh, now we got this stainless steel monstrosity back here and i'm still trying to figure it out but uh we got dinner on we're having what's this uh small potatoes uh-huh yeah smoked so. sausage and potatoes and cheese and a little bit of garlic and so meals like that that you can prepare ahead, you know, it's a lot like camping. You know, if you can prepare them ahead at home and then just throw them on the, the grill when you get here, you know, it just works out a lot nicer. 
and then it's aluminum foil so cleanup is nice and easy so we're going to wait for dinner to get cooked and then uh, we'll come back with you and show you how easy it is to uh, turn this thing into a, a pop top camper So we just finished a delicious dinner, the uh, small potatoes with uh, the uh, sausage and cheese and, and garlic. That was, that was really good. So typically this is the time of night that we put the, the pop top cover on and it fits neatly in this little bag that I sewed up for it. Um, I, I got this idea, Catalina makes one a similar cover type deal for their uh, 25 and 27 foot boats that had pop tops on it. And, and I just happened to see that and I thought, well, you got a pop top, why can't we have that? So, so I just started cutting and sewing one day and about three weeks later, <laughs> I finally got it done. But uh, it's a pretty simple deal once we get it going here. So we'll pop it out of the bag. And it still has blood stains from the Canadian mosquitoes that we, we murdered inside the boat. Uh, we had a problem when we took the boat on our honeymoon to the North Channel. We started taking on water unexpectedly <laughs> and we hurried back to the dock and we got there just about the time the mosquitoes came out. And how many did we trap inside the boat? Uh, hundreds. Hundreds. It was crazy. Cindy was hiding underneath the blankets and I had a fly swatter. And it was like mortal combat there for an hour trying to get them. So to put this thing on, I honestly don't remember how I folded it up last time. So I just kind of unfold it here and see what part comes out which. So there's the door. So that goes forward. This goes back like this. It's probably making all kinds of oh, I can only imagine noise yeah. on your microphone. May have to work on that in the post processing. So I typically start up front here and get the sides kind of roughed in like that. But that night in Canada, my gosh, I think I set a land speed record putting this thing on because the mosquitoes were, were swarming us bad when we got back to the parking lot. So we got two windows up here in front and then it goes around the mast. And when we say tiny, tiny water camper, we mean it. it it's not very big. I guess it would help if I had it right side out. I got it turned over. <laughs> I would help you, but I think I would just be in the way. Yeah, it's fine. I try to remember how I put it up, but this That's is the first time ago. this year. Yeah. That's what year did I make this? It had been 2015. Maybe, yeah. Uh, something like that. There we go. Yeah, it looks better. And like I said, it just snaps on. I did add the fuzzy part of the, uh, the loop part of Velcro to the underside of it to help seal it between the snaps. Cause I was just a little concerned about critters getting in. And I never counted how many snaps are on it, but there's quite a few. And one of the nice things about this is it gives us extra storage space once we get it up. And on a boat this size, any storage space is, is golden. Yeah, we can put our towels up there. Prevents them from getting mild, not mildew, but dew on the night <clears throat> or throughout the night. We've ridden through some pretty good rains with this mm -hmm. and stayed dry with it. It's a sunbrella type material, like what I used on everything else. <laughs> That's a nice view. This is the first zipper I ever put in anything. And of course, I had to pick a zipper that had a curve in it. But it actually works. Oh, yeah, I mean, it works great. <laughs> and we get back to the back because of the way the pop top goes forward you wind up with this void area between the top and the back wall of the boat. So I made, I just kind of winged this because, uh, in fact, I winged the whole thing, <laughs> to be honest about it. Um, 
I put a pocket here that this piece of PVC slides into. And I heated the PVC up and put a bend in it to match kind of the top of the, of the, the boat. And then I made these two pieces here that they just basically slip over these rubber stoppers and that kind of holds them in place and then the tension of the top when it snaps in down here holds this all in place and actually it works pretty well yeah. I mean nothing says redneck boater quite like PVC pipe on a sailboat <laughs> oh well they've not seen our our oh. redneck bimini yet that's that's the best <laughs> That's our Conestoga wagon. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It protects us from the sun. And exactly. And it works. It's not like we're trying to impress anybody with our 20 foot boat. <laughs> What's going oh boy. On? That was close. <laughs> What's going on in there? Did it almost fall over? Almost. Yeah. I get faster the more I do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the key right here. Once you get one snap down here at the bottom. There we go. And that kind of locks that top in place. There we go. Now it's just a matter of putting all the snaps in and finishing it out. And we are golden. I'm not going to make fun of it because it it really does allow us to have more room when we stay all night. Oh, it's a game changer. And that's one of the reasons, or this top really is one of the reasons that I did that ARB mod. Because I knew how much this changed this boat, having this um, extra room. And once I saw how the ARB awning attached to the side of the cabin or, or didn't attach to the side of the camper you know I, I did not hesitate one bit to, to start cutting and chopping on it i think you missed your calling you could have been a i don't know <laughs> something <laughs> something engineer nautical mm. engineer Hardly. I don't work well with others. I guess if you had your own company and you were your only employee. There you go. <coughs> so there we are. And this zips up from the outside and inside both like this. And then I made this high tech window flap that we have it open just about every time we're in here. Um, and if there's any air moving at all, uh, generally the boat will line up into the wind. So with the bow hatch open and this open back here, we get nice airflow through the cabin. But this takes our, our little bitty sailboat and turns it into a, a very capable, uh, just tiny water camper. <laughs> so we're gonna let Cindy set up the inside, get the bed made. And then uh, we'll come back and show you the inside of the, the camper once we get everything set up in there. All right, come on down into our tiny camper. On so, water. On the water. Our, our water camper. Our tiny water camper. There we go. So we've got the table dropped down now. We've got our cushions rearranged so that we're good to go. We've got our pillows set up there. Uh, we cover the winch, uh, which raises and lowers that swing keel in the boat. We cover it with a pillow just to make sure that I don't knock my head in, in the middle of the night. And you know, we, obviously I can't stand up, but Cindy can stand up in here just fine. Yeah, I got plenty of room. Yeah, and then we gain this storage area up here over top of the cabin, which is nice. I can put my backpack and, you know, other stuff up here, towels, and, you know, along the edge, we can stick our phones. Um, and then, like I said, we went off and forgot our fire tablet. Normally we would lay here at night and, and watch the watch a movie or at least watch five minutes of the movie before I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and we still have, you know, access to our, uh, our countertop over here. We got our cooler within reach. I mean, really, it's small. I mean, I'm not going to say it isn't, but at the same time, it's very cozy. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, I mean, we sleep well in here. 
this is it. I mean, it's nothing fancy. You know, we got access to the enclosed head, you know, around this way. <laughs> so in the middle of the night when nature calls, we can just go right around the corner. You know, and it works very well. And we will sleep. It's just un un crazy how well we sleep on in this goofy boat. I mean, there have been times we haven't woke up till what, 10 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, and that's really, and, and I mean, that's very unusual for you, but... Yeah, when it gets 10 o'clock in the morning, you better be checking for a pulse for me because, you know, that's just, <laughs> that doesn't happen. But on the water, you know, if it's calm and we don't have a bunch of boats bouncing us around, yeah, it's just like sleeping and, you know, it's, it's just really good sleep. It's nice, yeah. yeah. So for a cheap, simple boat, you know, and when I say cheap and simple, I use those terms mildly, but... You know, to have this capability to be able to throw this top on here, and I'm, I'm laughing because I can see that blood right there from the Canadian mosquito. <laughs> I won't show that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how well this is going to take inside, but uh, you see, stretched out here, you got or got the back door shut, got the radio on over there. Cindy's paddleboarding out. Might be able to see her there through the window. She's out playing around on her paddleboard. <clears throat> but like I said, it's a very, very tiny. Um, water camper but for what it is and, and what we use it for we just have a ball with this thing so when Cindy gets back with her paddle board I'm gonna grab my fly rod and uh, go see if I can catch a fish So Sam is getting ready to fly fish on the paddleboard. And I tell you, he surprised me with this paddleboard for my birthday a few years ago. And we have really used it a lot with this boat. I usually in the mornings, I'll go around to the edge of the shore and just kind of look at everything. And, and Sam uses it a lot to fly fish. Which much is, with shoes. what'd you say? It's much better with the shoes. Oh yeah, the shoes are a nice touch. <laughs> so uh, we'll see if he catches anything. So here it is about 11 o'clock uh, the next morning because we just woke up about an hour ago. <laughs> so how was the first night aboard on the 2023 sailing season? Uh, fantastic. And you know what? We really didn't, the water was super calm. We didn't really rock back and forth that much. There were no clinks or clangs or anything yeah. like that. Sometimes I, there can be. I don't think any fishermen went by in the night. No, I don't think there was anyone fishing. And things around uh, about dark, like any of the boats that were in the cove with us or around the cove, uh, everybody left. So we had the place to ourselves. It was, it was really nice. Well, it is Monday morning, so. That's true. <laughs> Most people are back at work. <laughs> those, those poor dogs. <laughs> Which is nice because it gives the lake to us. <laughs> it does. It's kind of like having your own private lake that you don't have to pay for. Well, there you go. Oh, we pay for it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> That's true. We did have a little excitement last night. We did. Um, I was watching uh, something on my phone, and I think you were surfing yeah, on your on phone. YouTube. You weren't yeah. asleep yet. But anyway, we heard a zing, and we heard the rod, you know, stumbling, crumbling, whatever. Crumbling. <laughs> and Sam threw his phone down, which he never does. He treats his phone like a baby. And um, he ran out to the unzipped the thing and ran out to the cockpit and there was a big old fish on the line. Yeah, I'd actually thrown a catfish bait out and just had the rod here in the corner of the, of the rear pulpit. And I'll give Cindy the camera because it's kind of funny uh, the way I found the rod. I'll try not to make anybody seasick. <laughs> okay. So when I heard the thing, it, it makes a funny noise when it bounces around this rear rail. But when I got out here, 
the fish had had the rod up on the lifeline like this and was sliding along the lifeline when I reached up and grabbed it. And uh, it took, what, about five minutes to get in? Oh, yeah. yeah. See, well, it did take, because I started videoing, and yeah. you were already... Yeah, you took me on a tour of the boat. Yeah, huh? you were already at the bow whenever yeah. I started filming. This is like a $20 Eagle Call telescoping rod, and I have a bunch of these because I keep one on all the, the kayaks, and uh, gosh, I think there's one in each camper, and we got one in the boat here, so I bet I got six of them. Um, but they're, they're very cheap, um, but they, they telescope down, and they store real nice for for applications like this. And I have caught a lot of fish on them because it's primarily what I use. It's either a fly rod or, or this telescoping rod. But you know, a four pound test line and a drag that is God only knows what the setting is. <laughs> you really gotta take your time when you get a big fish on board. And uh, he was probably four to five pound channel cat. And we got some video uh, we'll share here with you um, of the thing and some pictures of it. Um, but that was, that was kind of exciting. You know, oh, very much trying so. To, trying yeah. to get out of the boat and save my rod before it went overboard. <laughs> but, and not uh, let a bunch of mosquitoes in the That was cabin. the other thing. The, uh, and you'll see in the video that Cindy took, there were so many mosquitoes buzzing around that you can physically see them in the, the imagery. And I really would like to clean the fish and had it for breakfast, but I just didn't feel like giving that much blood to the mosquito bank because it was really bad. And when we got back in the boat and, and turned the lights on, we actually got quite a few in the boat. So it took a while to uh, debug the boat, but slept like a baby, you know, Woke up a few times and just rolled over. The moon was out. I don't know, it was what, about 2, 2.30 I woke up and the, the moon was just to our south. And I mean, it was like having uh, you know, a street light on on the boat. Uh, it, was, it was really pretty out, so. Uh, but it was, just, it was really hazy. The moon even had a ring around it. There was so much haze and smoke in the air from the fires in Canada. But, but you know, we just wanted to share our tiny water camper with everyone. Um, you know, it, Cindy said it's, it's like taking a little mini vacation. and. In a way, it is. You know, we're, it's an hour from our house to come over here and, and get on the boat and, and go sail. And you know, and when we get a chance to spend the night on board, you know, there's just nothing better than than sleeping on the boat. And you know, that pop top contraption, you know, the cover that I made for it, just works so well to uh, to give us some more space. So you know, if you if you aren't a sailor and you ever wanted to do it, definitely find someone that can sail that can take you for a for a ride on one. Because you know, if you're into water and you know like to relax and and, and like to have fun. I mean, sailing is just, it's just it for us. The, um, but that said, it's a lot of work. <laughs> and, and we didn't include that aspect of it in this video. But if you're interested in seeing what it takes for us to come get on the boat, get it all ready to go, get it up under sail and, and actually sail the boat and then put it all back. I mean, the work starts when you walk up to the boat and the work stops when you walk away from the boat. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of nonstop work. Um, so it definitely is not for everyone, but um, for those that, that enjoy it and, and see the beauty of it, um, it it's just, there's just nothing else like it. Uh, yeah. Agreed. Uh, yeah, definitely Cindy's favorite pastime, and, uh, and I love watching her smile. And, you know, she, she drives the boat probably 90% of the time, and, you know, when that wind picks up and the, the boat starts to roll over and take off, man, that smile on her face, is, it, it makes it worth everything. So I just man, that's a change that really used to intimidate me when we first started, man, I did not like it when the boat healed over. But what kind of cured me of that is when we went to Canada and we were healed over most of the oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Uh, yeah. The week we were there, the wind never stopped. And the next week, the trailer sailors group was there and the wind never blew. So they motored everywhere and we were hanging on for dear life. Oh, yeah. The, um, we that anchor. We've got a very small Bruce Claw anchor and uh, it, it held amazingly well, like it was welded to the bottom of the lake. And that line was so tight, you could pluck a knee cord off of it. <laughs> I mean, it was, that wind was cranking. But like I said, if you ever get a chance to go sailing, you know, definitely take, take the opportunity to do so because there's nothing quite like it. Agreed. So thank you all for watching and we'll see you on the next video. See you soon. Boat is going. Sam has jaws on the line. It's whipping him around the boat. Oh my, there's a bunch of bugs out here. <laughs> Good boy. Like that. Just don't fall off the boat, okay? And don't knock my phone out of my hands. Man, it's foggy. At least it looks foggy on my phone. <laughs>
Ja. <lacht> Oh, it's just like we see on TV. Fish on, baby! <laughs> fish on! Fish on! I mean, it's only four pound test line, so I don't, I don't have a whole lot of Well, wasn't like, didn't you have a picture of some guy that caught this humongous fish? It was a big catfish, pound, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a hundred pound fish on a ten pound line. Yeah, see? It can happen. Must have been that those uh chocolate covered peanuts. <laughs> they weren't chocolate covered peanuts. <laughs> it's what they look like. Yeah, so You didn't lose your rod. It was about to go over the lifeline. They, they hooked the bottom of the reel on the lifeline. Thank goodness. Oh, he's a good one. I'm glad I got my sweatshirt on. Do you have a net? A net. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a no. Oh, I didn't think it was a catchy thing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We've had him on the line for three minutes. Dollar telescoping rod. <laughs> <laughs> I've had more fun with these goofy telescoping rods and cheap fly rods. And, oh, there he is. He's just about to surface. Can you see him? Uh -uh. Oh, I, don't, I don't want to lose my phone. You won't lose your phone. I want to. Shining in the water. There you go. You see him come up and roll. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a nice size. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> he's going to go and wrap himself around the keel. That's what I'm afraid of. He's not ready to give up yet. There could just be a few thousand more bugs out here on my legs. <laughs> There he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not a I can tell if he's a channel cat or a fly here. Man, that's a nice sized fish, huh? Honey, that's the biggest fish you have ever seen you catch. 